Okay. Looks like we're ready to start. Hello, everybody. Thank you, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Phil Belanti. I'm one of the uh, WebEx developer evangelists, um, and I'm joined by the rest of the WebEx developer evangelist team. Um, our team's going to be answering any questions that you have throughout this uh, throughout the webinar. So if you experience any technical difficulties, first and foremost, you know, reach out to the QA section within the Slido app um, in WebEx, and uh, we will take a look at it for you. But uh, leading today's webinar is our esteemed manager of the developer evangelist team, uh, Adam Weeks. Uh, but again, hey, for, yeah, hi, Adam. Uh, <laughs> again, for today's webinar, uh, we're going to be using Slido uh, app for uh, some polls. So you might see a, this poll that's opened up now um, and also for uh, questions and answers. Um, so look for it to pop up on the right side of your screen if it hasn't already. Um, you can also participate on your mobile device uh, by using that QR code. Uh, but you know, before we kick things off, I mean, this is going to be an awesome webinar, by the way. Uh, code with ChatGPT, building an integration. Um, I think this one's going to be a super interesting one. But again, before we kick things off, uh, let's uh, do some news and updates for you. So if you want to switch over the slide there to the news and updates section. Is it up there now? Adam, is PowerPoint kind of acted up? Am I back? <laughs> oh. There you go, you froze. Did we lose you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I would just saw like the screen just kind of sit there. So just um, freezing up. <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. We're ready for the next slide, Adam. Now yeah, we're, yeah, we're ready All for right. the, the news section. I don't know uh, what exactly right. you missed of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go with the, back to the news, Phil. <laughs> Thank Sorry you very that. much. Okay. In other news, no, but uh, it's a, um, we have a new kind of WebEx application, and this one's pretty cool. Uh, it's a whole new application type that were recently launched. It's called WebEx Service Apps. Um, and what, really what makes Service Apps really special is they operate uh, independently of a specific WebEx user account. Uh, so that keeps critical business apps from being disrupted you know, by an authorized donor change. You know, We're talking like password resets or maybe they you know, depart the company. So this makes service apps an ideal solution, you know, for organizations that rely heavily on WebEx platform for things like, you know, provisioning and user onboarding, you know, active reporting, compliance, you know, all those important things. So uh, come check out the uh, service apps guide on developer.webex.com uh, and that'll help you get started. Uh, and then number two, uh, we're also excited to inform you that the uh, WebEx developer beta program is officially open. Um, so with the support of the WebEx beta platform, you know, you're now going to have opportunity to access WebEx developer platform APIs, SDKs, and other features before anybody else. So it's pretty cool uh, to be part of this program, um, you know, particularly if you want to get your hands on something, you know, early release. Um, so as a participant, you're going to have access to our, our latest platform feature, uh, the API for space linking uh, to enterprise content management folders. Um, and you can test uh, that uh, you can test that feature right upon registration. Um, and you can register at the URL highlighted there, uh, cs.co slash webex dash dev platform dash beta. And moving on to number three, um, introducing the WebEx Connect Center APIs in Developer Portal. Um, so uh, our colleague Arunab uh, from the WebEx Contact Center platform team uh, contributed a really nice blog post to formally introduce uh, this dedicated uh, WebEx Contact Center API in Developer Portal. Uh, these APIs enable custom inbound routing for omni-channel interactions. Uh, that includes voice, chat, email, social, text and SMS, uh, but all of these channels come together to enable more intelligent customer agent connections. You know, you can pass important contexts within a, a data-driven routing model. Um, and developers can also request a free contact center developer sandbox. 
and that provides administrator access to a licensed organization uh, for all your testing needs. So head over to our blog section on developer.webex.com. Uh, you can learn more about the Webex Connect Center platform uh, inside there. Uh, but while you are on the developer portal checking out that blog, uh, we also have a couple uh, recent how-to blogs uh, for creating OAuth integrations. Uh, so, you know, generating an OAuth token pair uh, in a WebEx integration. And then Adam wrote a really nice blog called Picking the Right Scopes uh, uh, with WebEx Calling OAuth Integrations. So um, you definitely want to check those out. I know uh, with OAuth, everybody is kind of looking for different strategies for managing tokens and things like that. So uh, we're always happy to provide more content uh, around that topic. And then also, you know, you're, we're still reading blogs here. Um, uh, Joe Zanini, who is going to be uh, taking over this next section for an App Hub update. Uh, but he also has a uh, a blog and a webinar recording available um, that provide pro tips for submitting an app hub uh, or submitting an app to the app, a WebEx app hub. So if you're considering or planning to submit an app to be published on uh, apphub.webex.com, you'll definitely want to check both of these out. Um, Joe gives you all the different caveats you should be looking for. So once you do submit, uh, you can get it approved right away. And last but not least, WebEx for Developers will be at Cisco Live again uh, in Las Vegas uh, to present a variety of sessions that showcase the platform. Uh, you can read our announcement and get all the details uh, at that blog at the, that highlighted URL on number six, cs.co slash w4d Cisco Live 2023. So that's all the news for you. I'm going to now hand it over to my esteemed colleague, Joe Zanini, to give us uh, uh, some updates on the WebEx App Hub. Joe? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about some of the new apps that are in the App Hub um, that recently were listed in, in about the last month. The first one I want to talk about is Verify. Verify is a reporting tool for WebEx calling. Um, users are able to look at call search histories and uh, uh, set time windows for searches, um, look at call data recordings and call data records, um, create custom dashboards and reporting tools, and you're able to, to, to schedule reports and have those delivered via email, chat, and other messaging services. My favorite part about Verify is they have a, a free trial on their website. So if you go to apphub.webex.com and search for Verify, Go to their landing page by clicking the learn more button and you'll find the form for their free trial. Very cool tool. Next, we have courts for WebEx by Davra. Um, they leverage WebEx technology on their platform. So WebEx users can go to the courts platform and have hearing and legal proceedings leveraging their WebEx account. Um, the feature sets include one-on-one uh, -on -one breakout rooms. So if a, uh, a judge needs to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with somebody in the hearing, um, if you need to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with a court secretary or a clerk, that functionality is all built out leveraging WebEx technology. They've included simultaneous interpretation, which I thought was pretty awesome. So uh, there, th it's the end of language barriers in, in hearings. Um, and uh, uh, they also uh, uh, have secure identity management. So um, they're making sure that people that are joining these hearings are exactly who needs to be in the hearings in a secure and encrypted manner. Videocom is a camera. Uh, so you're able to uh, share your camera data um, during a presentation uh, so instead of uh, hitting the share button in, in the WebEx client and sharing a monitor or a app that's open like a browser, you can use your camera as a source and cater your presentations on the Videocom platform in a custom fashion. So slide decks, interactive uh, uh, parts of the uh, presentation can all be catered and uh, set in a custom fashion on the Videocom platform. It's a really cool new feature. Definitely uh, advise to check this one out. Jenea Access Control is a platform that provides uh, 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 incident management for physical locations. So uh, Cisco employees all have Cisco badges. So when we go to the office, we have to scan into a door. With Jenea, 
Um, when you're monitoring particular sensitive areas, physical locations, you can get a message in the WebEx platform letting you know that somebody entered a building at a certain time. Uh, you could even get links to uh, video footage of that in incident. And, and, and it makes it really easy to seamlessly monitor physical locations from wherever you're at in the world if you're using WebEx Messenger. And we also have Capture My Meeting. Uh, Capture My Meeting is an AI-driven uh, meeting productivity app. Uh, they absorb uh, uh, recordings and provide post-meeting analysis. Um, you're able to search through your, your recordings, the transcripts, you're able to highlight notes in the meeting. Uh, you're able to share those notes with other participants in the meeting. Um, and you're able to get uh, GPT-generated meeting notes. Um, to connect this, you would implement the OAuth flow at the Capture My Meeting website. Um, and then you would have your meeting and, 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 and set it to where the recordings are absorbed um, automatically. And uh, to talk a little bit more about it, actually, uh, we have a Farhana from Capture My Meeting with us. Um, Farhana, I um, just gave my uh, a spiel about Capture My Meeting. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Capture My Meeting and the WebEx integration? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you for the, the great intro. Um, yeah, so we're basically um, an AI-driven meeting productivity platform uh, that keeps track of users meeting recording content, as Joe mentioned, um, summarizes it, and then converts it to actionable uh, next steps. Um, and we're basically trying to bring together powerful AI and integrations to achieve that mission. So overall, our goal is to um, help users get from their meetings to their action items um, as quickly as possible with as little effort on their end as possible so that they can focus on what matters, which is their, their actual jobs, uh, tasks, action items, rather than that tedious, uh, you know, meeting content tracking and organizing of tasks that uh, we you typically would have to do otherwise. Um, that software can just do for you oftentimes even better. Um, so it's just we're trying to put, you know, AI at people's fingertips um, so they can keep track of and act on the uh, collected knowledge from their meetings. Um, and yeah, like as as Joe mentioned, um, some of our features are uh, meeting notes, um, action items, generate transcripts. Uh, we have a search tool for any spoken or written word uh, that shows up within your meeting um, and also content sharing capabilities. Um, and so regarding the integration with WebEx, um, so basically our integration makes the process of getting from the meeting to the notes um, seamless for WebEx meetings. So um, basically with the integration, we're automating the process of importing WebEx recordings into Capture My Meeting. So whereas before the integration, users would need to go and download their recordings from, uh, from WebEx Cloud and then manually upload them to Capture My Meeting, uh, with the integration, the recorded meetings will be automatically imported. Um, so that gets rid of that whole manual uh, uploading and waiting process. And then uh, basically by the time users sign into Capture My Meeting because they want to take a look at their notes or try to recall something, the content is ready um, and, and they've basically been notified about that. Um, and yeah, and you know, the integration is simple. Joe, um, Joe mentioned a bit about it as well. Uh, just basically involved us setting up OAuth to get authorization from uh, WebEx users uh, for us to access their WebEx data, um, and then setting up webhooks to subsequently uh, capture their meeting reporting events in real time. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much an overview. Um, let me know if you want me to uh, uh, go into more detail, Joe. Sure, sure. Um, you know, being a developer working with the uh, WebEx developer solutions, what was your experience like working with the developer tools that are on the developer portal, um, the, the, the app submission process when you were done developing and, and the review process? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I found it pretty straightforward. I, I thought the, uh, the API documentation is organized really well. Um, and it's, it's very easy to navigate through basically each meeting re resource that you want to access through the API, whether that's recordings, participant info, meeting info, um, it's all organized into its own section. So uh, it's kind of easy to tell which APIs exist per resource. So um, you can very quickly understand the capabilities of the API uh, in that way. Um, I, I love the developer tools that uh, that are provided as well uh, by WebEx. Um, there's one that you can use to basically just query the API with like an automatically generated access token um, that's that's temporary. Um, so you don't have to go ahead and like generate 
that access token yourself or format the API call yourself. It's sort of all within the developer tool and you can just very easily make, um, you know, quick API calls. Um, it speeds up testing and learning the API. Uh, and also, like, if you wanted to clean up test data, you can just very easily do it with the developer tool. So I thought that was uh, very, very useful for our development. Um, and and yeah, they you know they also provide a, a sandbox environment, so you can you can create a sandbox account with all capabilities, so that you can basically test without having to pay. So that's very very cool as well. Um, and yeah, I, I thought it was very very uh, straightforward. Um, you also get paired with a develop, developer evangelist. So I was working really closely with Joe throughout this time to get my questions answered. Um, and also with dev support at WebEx as well, and they get back to you really quickly and provide a lot of guidance. So, um, yeah, so that was uh, going through the API documentation. Joe, you mentioned um, the submission process, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so for the submission process, I thought that was uh, also very straightforward. Basically, um, I met with uh, Joe to go over the requirements and uh, basically like common reasons that uh, apps typically fail the submission process the first time around. So that really helped to reduce the number of revisions we had to do. Um, you'll have basically uh, someone who's functionally testing your app to make sure it's the integration is working as expected. Um, so that also went smoothly. Uh, we, we did have uh, like one revision to make after that test. Uh, and um, that was also a smooth process to fix it because we were able to get help from both um, the functional tester and also uh, developer support to help us understand what was going wrong. Um, and I think like within uh, just like a few days after submitting, we were on WebEx App Hub, so that was also a very smooth process. Um, yeah, uh, did I get all your questions? That was um, it. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Awesome. Um, lastly, um, it is there any uh, uh, feedback that your users are giving you about the integration? Yeah, um, they, they're they're loving the integration. They love the fact that um, they can just you know go in into their meetings and click record and that's literally all they have to do um and and then they just see their meetings show up and capture my meeting after that um a, a lot of uh what, what one thing we've learned a lot from this experience is um, why users are very attached to webex particularly uh with its you know special emphasis on security and privacy and whatnot and so um like they won't move away from it the fact that they were able to find an integration for a third party application that basically did everything they wanted it to do and still be able to use WebEx and not have to switch off platforms. Um, uh, they're, they're really liking that. They're finding it to improve their productivity significantly as well. So. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for Hana for that insight. Um, and uh, yeah, Adam, that's back to you. Let's get into chat GPT and, 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 and play around here. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Verona, for for joining us. We really appreciate your time and telling your story about with Capture My Meeting. And it sounds like I need to in, install that integration on my yeah, WebEx sure. account. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we did kick off uh, with a little Slido poll. I know it's, uh, let's see if I can get to it and switch and show the results here. But we know it's summer's co closing in on us here on the northern hem hemisphere, and maybe a winter break's closing in on the southern hemisphere. So we wanted to try to pull everyone to see where we're, where you're at, where your favorite places to go are. And as I'm trying to get the switcher to turn on here <laughs> to show the results, stand by just a second. Can we show the results here, Phil? Present here. Let me try to switch it here from my side and see if it works. Let's see here. Switch to live phone. Okay, here we go. Now we're seeing it. Okay. Let's get a share on your screen. There it is. Yep. Coming across now. Yeah, let me know my Wi-Fi is acting. People like, like the beach. Here, of course. Yeah, beach, somebody no parts. I'm happy somebody put Toronto. I love Toronto. <laughs> that is great to hear. So let's, uh, all right, thank you so much for those. All right, let me switch oh, it back yeah. over. Yeah. And I will turn that off there. Okay. 
and get back to our presentation here real quick. So yeah, just going over. So we did uh, have our news and updates. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about what chat GPT is if you've been living under a rock for the past few months and, and not heard all of the excitement about it. Um, and then we're gonna go in and try to use chat GPT and build uh, application live. So let's cross our fingers and hope the demo gods and Wi-Fi stays up for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> The first thing I wanted to show you is that uh, one of the things that the AI has been really popular with is image generation. And so this was my attempt at, uh, if, things, if you see things aren't quite going quite so right, but I asked the uh, uh, image generator to give me a, a group of avocado, a family of avocados, which is what our developer advocates are commonly referred to as, as avocados. Uh, and I wanted them to be running from a, from robots on the beach, but uh, apparently they're they're still not they're not too concerned about it. it doesn't seem like they're still it's kind of just laid back and enjoying themselves. Uh, but yeah, this was my attempt at trying to doing some open AI uh, dream uh, using dreamstudio.ai. But going into like what ChatGPT is, uh, it is a natural language processing model that was developed by the company OpenAI. Uh, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer Architecture, uh, and it's just it's a tool, it's a thing for language models. And there was previously GPT two and three, and even now it's uh, they've got GPT four out. Uh, that natural language processing task just takes things like sentiment analysis, language translation, and language generation, uh, and it uses it works by having a huge amount of data. So it uses the, the model that's been trained. It's been used with all of the, the data they can find on the internet, books, movies, and TV shows. Uh, it, it, it's been used and, and populated uh, their, that huge uh, LLM, which is the large language model. So it really generates accurate and uh, nuanced responses better than and anything that we've seen in previous generations of these things. So the, when I was talking about the LLM, the, the large language model, there's things, there's what it's called doing under underneath the, the hook, the hood is it's doing this pre-training. And what it does is it, you know, like I said, it takes these books, articles, and websites and it ingests all the information and starts learning information and learns patterns about the data, uh, the, the written data that's in there. And it allows them to really uh, just learn how humans communicate and without, and it goes through and does what's called unsupervised learning. So it takes these things and starts generating, generating based off of percentages and statistics on like what what comes next in a sentence and you know it, and understanding like how uh, sentence structure is is processed. And it, it works very similar to like some of the some of the really early examples and experiments they did with like understanding how brain processes fire off and 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 neurons and all, all that fun stuff. Uh, what I also call it, they have a thing called attention mechanisms. So these attention mechanisms really help the large language models focus on key aspects of a sentence. So it, it breaks things down and understands what the core concept is that you're asking the question. So you could ask a question, you know, and with language, you, you can phrase a question 800 different ways, but they're all the, the question would still be the same. Uh, and it understands that it understands these sort of the things that really call attention to these things in the uh, in the model. Uh, and then finally, you know, we kind of go in, it goes into and generates the these um, the accurate and contextually appropriate responses. So it can tell what what you've asked, and then gives those responses back in the way that you're you're asking the question. So it kind of it, it does. It's a powerful technique for training. Uh, language processing models and and really using that unsupervised learning it has as a way of just going through and just learning everything it can uh, about about the about the way us humans interact. And then what what are we going to do with that with information? So now we've got these tools. What can we do? You know, we we heard Ferana uses their their application uses chat or uses GPT to generate the the meeting notes from from their meeting recording. You know, it can. Uh, what we're seeing a lot of developers use use these things for one of the big things is like natural language querying. So you could even 
if you want to have you know, your, your your data sets and have somebody ask a question about to find some data in your data sets, you, you're no longer stuck to like writing SQL queries. Uh, I don't know if you're if you're big fans of that or not, but yeah, they, you know, um, I know back in college I was not a fan of writing all these different SQL queries and and having to write all these things out. So it'd be great. It's great to have like a natural language uh, querying of your data. Uh, it also can be used for in intent recognition. So things like uh, you know, when people are questioning a chatbot or a virtual assistant, you know, that the software developers can use ChatGPT to kind of understand, all right, what this person seems to be asking me this question this way, but I'm not quite sure. And and GPT can can do does a lot better way of ana analysis and analyzing and understanding the intents of what the person is actually asking them. Uh, another fun fun use of ChatGPT that I didn't even think about uh, is is automated testing. So you can, if you want to run some automated tests and write automated tests for your your applications, you could build the tests off of your. You, know, you can give it a script, uh, a, a word script. Just tell it what to do, and it will build those automated tests. And that's a really really interesting application that I'd, I'd like to see some more of on that. And then finally, what we're going to show today is code generation. So yeah, um, it understands code. You know, it has access to all of our open source libraries and code that's out there on the internet, and knows how things work, and uses our de uh, developer documentation. And it, we can ask it to to generate some code that does a certain task, and it will do so quite quite astoundingly, as you as we're about to see. So. With that, let's. I'd like to start going into what we're going to build today. Trying to give you a quick little overview, uh, almost like we're like a product manager trying to describe what we're going to what we're going to build, and and then start telling ChatGPT what we're going to build here. So we're going to have a, a theoretical web service that we get new user registrations from, and we want to know about when those new users are happening. Um, that that web service is going to send out those notifications as a webhook. And we're going to be listening for those webhooks. The thing that makes this unique is that uh, a lot of our users are living in WebEx. Uh, all of our team lives in WebEx, does all of our co collaboration within WebEx. And so we want to use a WebEx space to get those notifications from our uh, of our new user registration. So that's what we're going to be building today is we're going to build an integration that receives a webhook about a uh, user registration and then turn, takes around and turns it into a WebEx space message from a from a WebEx bot. So how are we going to actually go about doing that? Setting up our environment here, we're going to have Visual Studio Code. We want to build this in Python, so we're going to use the programming language Python. Uh, for our web server, we're going to use Flask as the, the framework to, to handle our incoming webhooks. Uh, we do want to use the new the buttons and cards feature that WebEx bots provide us, and we're going to be posting those as messages as an adaptive card. Uh, WebEx supports adaptive card spec version 1.3, so that's what we're going to limit that to version 1.3. And since we don't actually have a web service that's pushing out these webhooks, we're going to use curl on the command line to simulate a, a webhook event and send it over to our bot. Now, I do want to kick off with some caveats and warnings about building with ChatGPT. Uh, as, as we've done this a few times now, uh, we've, we've learned a few things going through it. Uh, the first thing, obviously, is trust but verify. So we want to trust that the code is coming back is good, but we want to verify it before actually executing it. So reading through that code, making sure it's doing what you're expecting it to do and not just pasting it into your your terminal and, and running it uh, immediately. Um, one thing that we did notice about ChatGPT is if you get your application a bit too long, there are response length limits for the, the web interface. Uh, we're going to be using a free account to, to run through some of these things and just show you what's possible. So if the response gets too long, it will get cut off and it doesn't even realize it, that, that it's getting cut off. Uh, you can ask it to continue, but what you want to really do is try structure your prompts to to shorter to get shorter responses versus a longer give me the entire application type of response. Uh, one other thing I did notice is that going through this is that they will the, the code that's generated will change variable names sometimes. 
as you're going through, like, all right, I want to use you know, the bot token, and then it'll change it to bot access token, things like that. Be aware of that because uh, I did get caught in a, a few of those issues a, a few times that just was like, I did, couldn't realize what happened. And then I saw, oh, that it gave me a variable name on the first response here. And then on the third response, that variable name that they were talking about changed. Uh, so yeah, it's another one of those things, trust but verify, make sure that the code is is what you expect it to be. And then the um, the web-based knowledge for ChatGPT, I know it, it's taken from a snapshot from 2021 uh, of the web. Um, I know there are plugins for different things that will bring things up to date, but just kind of taking that into consideration with it, with your answers, there may be newer versions of things that, that ChatGPT is not aware of that you wanna get started with. With all that in mind, I wanted to share with you what my initial prompt was to chat GPT and that we're gonna be using today. Um, what I'm doing here is, is, so instead of having you watch me type all this out to chat GPT, I'm just gonna copy and paste this into chat GPT once we get started. But what I've learned is that the more detailed you can be in your initial prompt, the better, the better your answers get. So you wanna make sure that you set up the scene like like we did when we we're talking about what we were building and how we were building it. This you you want to provide as much um, examples and as much limitations as you can to make sure it gets you the right way that you want. So you see here, I, I talk about you know we have a what we're what we're actually doing is the first line of talking about the, the WebEx bot receiving a web hook with a user registration event, um, and then like. I did notice that ChatGPT wants to use one of our uh, community libraries for Python uh, a lot of the times when I use it. So I, I'd rather have this example go directly to our APIs versus using a, using a, an SDK. Um, so I'm telling you, I want to use the WebEx APIs directly, and and I also want it to be more secure. So I'm telling it that I'm, I'm storing things in certain environment variables uh, to use. Um, like you see, I don't want to use a WebEx SDK package. I want to use APIs directly. Uh, WebExAPIs.com. A few years ago, our our main uh, API domain changed from API.CiscoSpark to WebExAPIs.com with our rebrand. Uh, you will see that the ChatGPT will give the the old API domain, but as soon as you tell it this, it kind of knows and will start using that WebExAPIs.com. Um, if there's certain packages that you know that you want to use, like Python.env, uh, I'm a big fan of .env packages uh, for JavaScript and Python. Uh, it makes setting up environment variables uh, so simple, and, and you're able to throw those throw that information into a, a file, the .env file. And then, like I said, they adapt to card spec. So with that, let's get to coding. this out of the way here. And feel free to use our chat in Q&A. Uh, I know Joe and Phil are gonna be monitoring it for us and, and let me know if there's any questions that you have. But what I've got, so what I've got here, I've got chat GPT opened up. Uh, I've got my Test account logged into the web, the WebEx web client and the developer portal. Uh, so, first, so I'm going to take that prompt that I showed you just a second ago. I'm going to copy it and paste it into here. Actually, let me refresh, make sure I got a fresh, clean connection to ChatGPT. And here we go. So it's telling us about setting up our development environment. Maybe I'll zoom this in a little bit too. Like setting up Python virtual environments, which is great for, for production environment types code, activating those that production environment, and then installing the packages. So like you see, I saw asset for the python.env package. It's gonna give us that. We told it we wanted to do Flask. So it's gonna install these packages and tell it, since I told it I want to use a .env file, it's already going to tell me, it says, here's a create, create that .env file and store those things in there. Um, luckily, I have already set that up to, where's my Visual Studio code? We've got our .env file set up. We want to create a Python script, app.py. 
So I do have, uh, let's do that now, have that py. Import our modules that we need in our app py file. See, this is this is interesting because it's breaking down the code into smaller pieces. Um, the past few times we've done this, it gives us a big block. And you, and that's what I was saying. You never know what we're get, what you're going to get with ChatGPT. It's like every time is a different experience. So let's see here. We're going to load our environment variables. So it's getting it from our .env file. It's doing the, our entire Flask application. So we're going to get that, paste it in our file too. And now it is all set up. So the next thing I'm going to do is now that I have that, I know I need to create a WebEx bot. And I could have, should we have ChatGPT tell us how to create a WebEx bot? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, how do I create a WebEx bot? Okay, Let's sign into the developer portal. Calm down, I'm doing my job here. <laughs> <laughs> See, and those are about our environment variables. We're going to start in the bot token and obtain the WebEx room ID where you want to post the adaptive card. You can do web APIs or using a WebEx team client. All right, so let's follow those steps. Let's get over to the dev portal. And we are going to my WebEx apps. And creating a bot. So webinar notification bot. And I don't really care. I'm just going to give it a username that hopefully is available. We'll go with this kind of tealish color icon. Good choice. Sorry, sorry, Joe. On my App Hub description, I'm just going to give it some things so it just meets that minimal character. Draw a little rubble stamp of that one for you. So we've got our bot access token now. So I'm going to copy this token. And I'm going to switch over. Hopefully, I don't make you all sick by switching my windows back and forth here. Go into my environment variable file. I'm going to pat, paste my bot token. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get my room ID that I want to post that message in. So I have a space called webinar bot test. How I'm going to get that room ID is I'm actually going to use that API try it tool that actually that Ferrano was talking about earlier. And I'm going to go through our main documentation page and find our messaging APIs and reference. And I am looking for the rooms that I'm in. So if I get a list of my rooms, here's the the API try it tool where you can go in. I don't I didn't have to build an integration to get any of this information. I can do it all straight from the developer portal. I'm just going to hit run. It's going to tell me the rooms that I'm in. Let's take a look at this is the, the JSON that recorded. Uh, webinar bot test is the room or space that we are wanting to go. So I'm going to copy that room ID. I'm going to put that in my environment variable as well. So WebEx room ID, paste. All right, so let's go back to our code. Shrink this terminal down so we can actually see some code. So let's let's look at what we're doing so far. So we've got our Flask framework. We're loading our .env variables, actually calling load.env. We're storing our variables that we stored in the .env file. Here are these variables, bot token and room ID. We're setting up our Flask application. We now have a slash webhook endpoint that's running on that will be running on our server, and we're going to handle the incoming webhook here. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, I want I do have a sample of our payload that the our web application service will be sending out for the webhook. 
And what's great about ChatGPT is I can just take this whole thing and copy it and say, all right, I'm gonna copy. This is an example of the payload for our new user registration. If I go back to ChatGPT, I'm going to say, let's say set up the incoming webhook to receive in the following format. I'm just going to paste this whole JSON. Uh, sometimes I like to give it a little helper and give this the markdown like back text and tell it it's JSON. I don't know if that helps or not, but I do like doing that. Seven incoming webhook on the special like JSON payload. All right, so now it's going to be filling out my Flask application now for that handling that webhook. See, we've got getting the payload oh, before. I don't let it scroll off the screen too quickly. Handling the webhook. So when that post comes into that slash webhook endpoints, we're going to get that the, the JSON from it. We're going to extract the data out of it. Ooh, and look, it even verifies that it's a proper event before it does any processing. So it's looking for the user registered. So if someone were to send a bad webhook to our endpoint, it won't process it and just leave out of there. And then, oh, look, it's going to, so it's taking this and it's generating a, our adaptive card, and then it's going to post it to the space. And it's even defined the function to post this to the space. Looks like they've got just a, a placeholder on the code right here. So I'm going, everything looks good here. I'm going to copy the code, paste it in. Scroll back up, make sure it looks good. We went through, we've got our payload event happening, registering and posting the adaptive card. And it's kind of get, it's kind of leading you to it, to, to writing the code, but really I don't really feel like calling the, I don't feel like writing the code out to call that. Uh, I know that we are using the request library to make the API. So can I, let's say, give me the code for the, what was the function called? Post adaptive card. Post adaptive card function that will use the request library to post a message to the WebEx APIs.com endpoint. All right, here's our function being printed out for us. Uh, you see what it did? Still, still trying to use that Cisco Spark. Yeah. Still trying to use that Cisco Spark API, which still works. Uh, but let's say, all right, it's telling us what to do here. It's explaining the code a bit, but I want to say, uh, give me the code, or actually, let's go back. Let's say, Let's not use api.ciscospark.com. Please use webexapis.com. And I'm always really polite to the AI because they, just in case they take over, they want, I want to be like one of their, their, their good people, you know, that they're, they're polite and nice to them. So to make sure that they'll remember uh, that. They know who the who the <laughs> the helpers are. <laughs> right, see, now, there we go. So it's using WebExAPIs.com now. We've got our function. I'm going to take this. Let's see. Let's take a look. We hit our endpoint. Messages API looks good. We've got our WebEx bot token, which is stored from the environment variable, the room ID, the attachment. It's making the making the post response. And it's going to tell you if, if it worked or not. So I do see one issue that this where this will not work, but I'm going to not spoil it yet. So uh, did I import the request library? You did from class. Oh, but not requests. All 
All right, so request is in there now. Thankfully, uh, Visual Studio Code let me know that this wasn't being imported properly. This all looks good. So I have my payload file. Now I want to try to test this out. Actually, let's see if we can even run it. All right, our server is up and running, but now we need to have a way to send a this payload to our server with curl. I don't have that command, but I can ask ChatGPT to generate that curl command for us. So my server is running on HTTP, what did I say, 127, 4,000. Can you give me a curl command that will send the webhook payload to the slash webhook endpoint using the file, what did we call that file? Payload.json? Called payload.json. So here's a curl command. Make sure you have payload.json with the file name. Curl, we're going to post it with as a JSON using the payload.json file to our webhook endpoint. That all looks good to me. And I'm glad I didn't have to Google what each curl option is. Hmm. And let's try it out, see what happens. Webhook was received. So if we look here, failed to post an adaptive card message, one of the following must be non-empty, text, file, or meeting ID. So our WebEx API is giving us this error saying that uh, one of these things must be non-empty. If we take a look at our payload request uh, on, on the post, you'll see that we do not have text, file, or meeting ID. This is what I was talking about where I seen, that I saw that the bug, I know that we're missing the, the text to render if they if you're using a WebEx client that does not have support for the adaptive cards. So what I'm going to do, I know that I need the text, but I'm going to pretend like I don't know, know it, and I'm going to tell ChatGPT I'm getting this error. I am getting the following error from webexapis.com. One of the following must be not used. So look, it's fixing my code now that I've had that bug. And here's that additional text line right in here. So in the payload, now it's adding in this text, the new user registration text. I'm not gonna copy this entire code that was created, just this line, if it'll let me highlight it and switch back to our app. We'll put the text in here, new user registration. And let's see what happens if we, when we restart. Our server's running. We're gonna send another webhook. Take a look here. Cannot find room with the provided ID. That's a new one. Hmm. My room ID correct? Oh, I know why. We Did... never added my bot to the room. Aha. Uh -huh. Very important. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I wonder if ChatGPT knows about that. <laughs> now I am getting this error. All right, so these are probably, probably the first things I would have tried here. It, it, I 
it, it's not telling me that the bot needs to be in the in the space, but we know that uh, the bot needs to go into there. So let's add let's add our bot into there. Now if I can just find my bot, I forgot what the uh, the Z bot. How many Z's I did? <laughs> <laughs> my copy that bot username the Z bot. Hopefully that doesn't mean we're putting people to sleep here. Webex notification bot is now in the space. And let's switch back to our Visual Studio code. Try it again. Webhook received. Adaptive card posted successfully. I see I've got an unread message. Hey, we've got an adaptive card that just got posted into our space. Woohoo. So that is very exciting. That with that, what, how long did that take us? About twenty minutes. Uh, about twenty minutes. How many lines <laughs> of code you have there, Adam? Uh, let's see. And it generated. We may need to ask ChatGPT to update my resume. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to be like you know reading from ChatGPT for all of our answers from now on. <laughs> do we want to? Let's see. Uh, do we have any questions? Like, do we want to add some features maybe to our bot? We want to try to change the layout a little bit. What can we do here? Let's take a look at that payload. Uh, since we have an image URL on here, let's ask it to let's use that image URL in our card. What do you think? Should we try that? Yeah. All right. Hopefully it doesn't What's say no. <laughs> what is the name of the function? Is uh, we got a request to the, ask, adaptive card. ask it to make the adaptive card more attractive. Ah, yeah. Can we make the adaptive card more attractive? Let's use the profile image URL to display an image with that URL. Now it's got the text in there. There we go. Here's the adaptive card. We do have a great adaptive card designer on our dev portal, but um, this is a really great way to get started with adaptive cards too. It's just, just kind of describing the adaptive card to ChatGPT and it will generate it. And I believe you can you can just paste that JSON code right into the um... To the designer, designer. Uh, and then you'll you can just start right from where it did it and you can you know, drag and drop yeah. from there uh, so let's take a look where that adaptive card go oh maybe it does have have it on there but it uh, the image doesn't actually exist let's see what it looks like We'll start and restart our server. I'm guessing that the image is not, let's see, can we, you give me, uh, let's get a real image URL. Give me a, Real profile image URL. Uh, yeah, both. yeah. I, I guess it's it's trying to. Maybe we have to be like you know, like uh, if you say um, maybe import that avocado photo into the directory, and then grab that. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to need to be a public your public image. Yeah, maybe a license free image. <clears throat> How about let's see what do we want to just search for. Uh, maybe Faker JS. 
If you haven't used Faker.js, this is a pretty great thing to, if you need to have some generic data, get started on here. Let me just find a, see if it can give me one. Image, image, image. They had some animals over on the yeah, side. Sure. Let's see if this this URL that they've got works. Oops, didn't copy. There we go. That's a profile. Right. Go into the payload. Let's do this. So that is the John Doe. Hey, there he is. All right. So we've got some images on there. Oh, Lord, I just saw the time. Uh, do we have any other Q&A or chats going on? Um, Sorry, I realized. We, we did have somebody that did, did ask to have it look more attractive. That's what we're doing now. Um, you know, perhaps using a WebEx favcon. I don't know if we can use like a WebEx image or. Hmm. I'll bet. I'll bet the maybe the the we got to check the people API. That'd be cool for a follow up session. I think we're out of time now, but using the API to get uh, the Fabcon and then yeah, reverting that into the adaptive card. Yep. And I'll bet we can tell ChatGPT to do that if it's if it's something we can do. Yeah. One thing you did mention, Phil. I I, I did want to show. Mm -hmm. I, I just copied that that um, the adaptive card. If I go to the buttons and cards and open up the buttons and cards designer. I create that and should be, oh, this one hasn't been updated to 1.3. My bad. Oh, it's it's still one point two in the design. Yep, sorry about that, everybody. I hate to have to do this, but here we go. Switch it over. Oh, it's doing it um, because that is not that is JSON in Python. That's why it, that is why. Oh, uh, yeah, There's no idea what those capital T trues are. <laughs> I'm sure I could probably just say, give me the. Yeah, fix this, please. Fix this. Oh, here we go. So then, oh. here we go. Now we're, this is our desire. If we want to change things around, we can go around and change those. Yeah, but give you a nice yeah. baseline to start with. Well, I'm I'm glad I was sweating a little bit, but we got it. We got it going. We got our app built, and uh, it did what we wanted to. I'm really excited about that. So, uh, normally that would have taken questions? about yeah. how long? Several, several <laughs> hours to, to days. Sprint <laughs> yeah. <of> work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's going to be an eight point estimate for to building all this. Yeah. And then, like, you can do things, and in, in, you can have it build unit tests if you need to for your application. And like I was saying, you can have it write automated tests. Uh, it's really, it's really limitless what, what we can do. So it's really exciting to see, uh, and it's really a good start. You know, it's a, it's it's a good supplement to your tool chain, to the development tool chain, to be able to use these types types of things. And um, yeah, thanks for everybody for joining uh, panel. Anything else? For everyone, no, well, we're right. just we're just sitting here in awe over the power of JGBT. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, great job, you. Adam. That was really <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> glad, did really well. Glad it worked out. Uh, yeah, uh, I do want to invite everyone. You know, we do have a survey after when when you leave the web the, when the web, webinar. Well, uh, my brain is no longer functioning, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, just let us know what you want to see next from our from our team uh, in current webinars and how you enjoy this one. So thanks, everyone. Uh, have a good day.